In this video, we will prove that the language L, which is the set of strings a to the n, b to the n, c to the n, such that n is greater than or equal, I should say greater than or equal to zero, is not context-free. So we're going to use pumping for context-free languages to prove that this language is not context-free. So first, let's remember what pumping gives us. If we're using pumping for context-free languages, it tells us that if it's a context-free language, then it must be pumpable. And I'm going to say by pumping lemma for context-free languages. Okay, notice here, this is a different pumping lemma. The pumping lemma for regular languages is different than the pumping lemma for context-free languages. Okay, so if it's a context-free language, it's pumpable by the pumping lemma for context-free languages. This also tells us if it's not pumpable, remember this is the contrapositive, it tells us it's not a context-free language. Okay, so if it's not pumpable using the pumping lemma for context-free languages, it's not a context-free language. Okay, again, we can use the pumping lemma for regular languages to show that if it's not pumpable by that lemma, it's not regular. This is a different lemma. Okay, different pumping lemma. What we cannot do is say that if it's pumpable by pumping for context-free languages, it must be a context-free language. Okay, this is not correct. Do not do that. Okay, so we can't use the pumping lemma to show that something is context-free, but we can use it to show that a language is not context-free. Okay, so now let's remember what the pumping lemma for context-free languages says. It says, if A is a context-free language, then there exists a number P, which is what we call the pumping length. And this could be and likely is a different P for every context-free language. So each context-free language has its own pumping length where if s is a string in the language and s is at least as long as p, so it has length greater than or equal to p, then there exists a decomposition, decomposition of s into pieces that we're going to label u, v, x, y, z, that satisfies the conditions, and we have three conditions. Okay, condition one is that for each, for each, that still doesn't look like each, Let's fix that. For each i greater than or equal to zero, the pump string, let's call it s prime, the pump string is going to be u v to the i x y to the i z is in the language. Okay, notice that for pumping for regular languages, we just pumped one piece. We pumped the piece that in that lemma we called y. Here we're pumping in two places. We're gonna pump in both v and y, and we're gonna pump simultaneously. Okay, so notice that they both um, get pumped to the i. It's not that v gets pumped to the i and y gets pumped to the j, it's not like that. They're both getting pumped to the same i. Okay, so we pump in two places, and this pump string is still in the language. Condition two, the length of vy has to be greater than zero. So both v and y cannot be epsilon. One or the other, or both, has to contain at least one character. Um, otherwise, this lemma is trivially true for everything, right? I can always assign v and y to be an empty substring, and then uh, that string is still in the language, right? <laughs> After pumping, still in the language because it's the same string. So V or Y or both have to contain at least one symbol. And the third condition is that the middle chunk can't be too big. 
So the chunk, the middle chunk is v x y, has to be no bigger than p. Okay, so this is what the pumping lemma says. So let's make sure, let's underline some important words here. Okay, the first word is there exists a number p. Okay, this doesn't say for all p's, it says there exists some p. Okay, so we only need to find one and it's going to be specific for that language. Also, there exists a decomposition, okay, that satisfies the following conditions. There may be decompositions that do not satisfy the following conditions. Okay, all that matters is that there is one. Okay, there exists. And the last important word is for each. We could have also said for every or for all. Okay, this means that it must hold true for every i. It must hold true for i equals 0, i equals 1, i equals 2. Okay, so how do we use this? This is what happens when a language is context free. We get um, all of this to hold, okay? So what we can do is we can assume that a language is context free for the purpose of obtaining a contradiction. And then we're going to just take P as its pumping length. We don't necessarily know what it is, so usually we just use P. And then all we have to do is show that for every decomposition, there is some I where the string is not in the language. Okay, so that's the strategy. Strategy for proving, let's call a language L is not context free. What we need to do is prove L is not pumpable. So we need to show that for every decomposition of S into these parts, U, V, X, Y, Z, there is some I for which S prime equals U, V to the I, X, Y to the I, Z is not in L. Okay, so this is important, and I think this is a little difficult to grasp sometimes, so I'm going to restate what I just said. The pumping lemma tells us there is some decomposition so that for every i, the pump string is in the language. So in order to prove that a language is not pumpable and therefore not context-free, we just have to show that for every decomposition, there is some i for which the pump string is not in the language. Okay, when we're trying to show that something does not exist, Right? The original lemma says there exists a decomposition. We have to show that for every decomposition, this is not true. Okay, And the original lemma says that for every i, the string is still in the language. So all we have to do is find some i, find one witness, so that the string is no longer in the language. So that will give us um, the violation of that condition one. Okay, The other two conditions, we just have to make sure that the decompositions we're checking match those um, conditions. Okay, so if the decompositions we're checking don't match those conditions, then the pumping lemma doesn't hold for that comp decomposition anyway. Okay, so we just need to make sure we meet those two and then I so that the string is not in the language. Okay, so hopefully the strategy is clear. So let's try to use it. Okay, so again let's remember that L was a to the n, b to the n, c to the n, so that n is greater than or equal to zero. Okay, so here's our proof that it is not context-free. Let's assume, and I'm gonna put here, for the purpose of obtaining a contradiction, that L is context-free. It's an element of the context-free languages. Okay. Then let P be the pumping length 
for L. Okay, if L is context-free, then there is a number P that is the pumping length. So we're, our assumption that L is context-free, then we're gonna let P be the variable standing for this number, the pumping length, that is the pumping length for L. Okay, so we need to find some string that has a decomposition that violates the pumping lemma. Okay, so let's choose string A to the P, B to the P, C to the P. Okay, so we had two conditions that were written into the words um, of the pumping lemma that we stated. They weren't listed as numbered conditions, but they were conditions in the paragraph. S has to be a string in A. Okay, so I'm gonna let that be S. So S is an element of the language L. So I said A, A was the language we were talking about in the lemma. Here we're talking about the language L. So we need to make sure that the string we chose is actually in the language. If we prove that we take a string that's not in the language and get another string that's not in the language, this doesn't help us at all, okay? So S is an L. Uh, why we let N equal P, because N can equal P, and then the string is in the language, okay? Next thing we have to check, the length of S is greater than or equal to P, okay? How do we know that that's true? The length of S is equal to 3P, which is definitely greater than or equal to P. Okay, so our choice of string is valid. We have chosen a string that's in the language and it has length at least as big as P. Okay, so now we need to consider all decompositions that meet conditions I believe they were two and three. Conditions two and three. Okay, those conditions were uh, V and Y can't both be empty and the length of VXY has to be less than P. Okay? So what do these decompositions look like? Notice that we don't have any restrictions on the other pieces. So U could be empty Z could be empty. Um, the only things that we have are that V and Y are not both empty, and the middle chunk is at most P. Okay, so let's consider uh, let's look at our string. We've got A to the P, B to the P, C to the P. Okay, so we're gonna do it a little bit the long way. The book does it a short way, um, but if it, this is still confusing and so you're watching the video, you might need to see it drawn out in more detail. So we're gonna do it in a lot of detail. Okay, so we're gonna consider when, um, let's say, how do we wanna do this? Let's do V, X, Y. So this middle chunk is all in the A's. Okay, so we're saying it's all located in there. So if V, the size of V is zero, then the size of Y is greater than or equal to one. So Y contains at least one A. Okay, so let's let the length of Y equal K. All right, then what does our pump string look like? Well, we know that X is taking up all of the rest of the A's up to the A that, up to the chunk that Y has. And it might also be the case that Z is taking up some of the A's too, okay? We don't know. We've just said that the X, Y is all in the A's. All right, so after I pump, what actually happens? I have some number of A's that were not covered by Y, so I have A to the P minus K, and then my Y chunk is A to the K. Actually, let me do this uh, even more detail. 
and then we'll summarize. We'll make it a little bit easier afterwards, but we'll do more detail first. Okay, let's let the length of length of x be what's a good one? J. Let's call it J. Okay, so v was empty, so x takes up a to the j. Y takes up a to the k, takes up ka's, where k is greater than or equal to 1. That means we would have some additional number of a's that could be located in z, which is p minus j minus k. Okay, and then we have the rest of the string, b to the p, c to the p, okay? So let's let i equal 0. We're going to pump down. What happens? Our chunk that was y disappears. We pump down, we have y to the 0, it disappears. So then we have, so if this is s, s prime is going to be p minus j minus k plus j. Same thing as p minus k. a to the p minus k. b to the p, c to the p. Okay, since k was at least 1, p minus k is not equal. p minus k is not equal to p. So s prime is not in the language. Okay, so notice here what happens if we swap v and y. Okay, I'm going to let v have length at least 1 and y is going to be empty. We're going to have the exact same argument. Our way that we write out the number of a's is going to be a little bit different, but the argument is going to be the same. Okay, let's see what happens if both Let's say the length of v, let's let that be, I've used k, I've used j, I've used i, uh, do, 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 let's let it be h, who knows. Length of v is h, length of h greater than or equal to 1. Let's let the length of y, again, be k, and let's let that be greater than or equal to 1. So the case I'm considering here is when neither v nor y is empty, and we're going to show that the string is still not in the language, the pump string. Okay, so remember we have pieces u, v, x, y, z. Okay, if the chunk uh, v, x, y is still all in the a's, right, it has to be length less than p, so it could be all located in the a's, I'm going to let um, the length of x again be j and so ah, I need to use that variable too I really don't want to let's use the length of u is g just so we can really draw this out alright so how many a's are in u it's going to be a to the g okay notice this could be 0 this could be 0 how many, so this is the u chunk. How many are in v? It's going to be h of them. How many are in x? It's going to be j of them. How many are in y? It's going to be k of them. And then how many are in z? The rest of them. So this is a to the p minus g minus h minus j minus k and then all of the p's and all of the c's. Okay, so again, uh, let's choose, choose i equals zero. What happens? v to the i and y to the i now are v to the zero and y to the zero, so those disappear. So what are we left with? We are left with p minus g minus h minus j minus k plus g plus j. Okay, so g and j um, cancel out the minus g and minus j, so we really have p minus h minus k. So we're going to end up with s prime is going to be a to the p minus h minus k, b to the p, c to the p. Okay, 
since h and k both had to be at least 1, p minus h minus k is not equal to p. Therefore, s prime is not in the language. Okay, so really we could have, so here's where I said we would simplify later. So the simplification is if v, x, y is all in one symbol, okay, then we're going to have this happening. If we pump down, that symbol, uh, how do we want to say this? We'll say has fewer occurrences than the other two symbols. So the pumped string is not in the language L. Okay? So what I did was I broke it down and showed you, okay, if if y is not empty and then v if is not empty and then if y and v are not empty. But we could have done this more generally and said as long as one or the other is not empty, once we pump down, we're knocking out some a's. And so the number of a's is not going to equal the number of b's or the number of c's. Notice I've also generalized further and said as long as this uh, vxy chunk is all located in only one symbol, then the pump string is not going to be in the language. Okay? And it doesn't matter which symbol. It could all be in the b's, it could all be in the c's, and we're going to have the same argument. Okay? So now what happens, let's consider Consider the decomposition has VXY spanning two symbols. Okay, again, I'm going to get specific and then we're going to generalize back out again. So, um, such that, let's let, um, let's let V be in the A's and Y be in the B's. Okay, we'll see that the same argument's gonna hold if B is in the A's and Y, or sorry, B is in the B's and Y is in the C's. Okay, why am I saying that um, they both have to have different symbols? Because even if VXY spans two different symbols, if V or Y is empty, so, so it's not the case that V has actu actually has some A's and Y actually has some B's, then we really have the last case that we had, okay, where the non-empty chunk, either V or Y, is all in one symbol, and we pump down, and we're out of the language. Okay, so here we want to say when V and Y are both not empty, so length of V is not zero, length of y is not zero, and they contain different symbols from each other. Okay, that's the decomposition I'm considering. Okay, so let's give some values to these again. So uh, what did I use before? I used H and K for V and Y and J and G. I'll try to use that again, see if I can remember. So the length of V is H. Let's let the length of Y be K. Let's let the length of U be G. And let's let the length of X, so I actually need two, do I need two values here? I only need one value. No, I do need two values. Okay, what did I use before? I used J, and I used K and I. Ugh, I'm running out of symbols. Let's use A and B. Length of X is A plus B. Why do I need two values? Because 
X is going to be the one that's spanning A's and B's. That's why. Okay? Oh, I shouldn't use A and B. A and B are in my string. Let's, let's find another symbol to use. Let's use E plus F. Okay, so what does my string decomposition look like? U has to be in the A's. It has G of them. V is still in the A's based on the decomposition we're considering. It has H of them. X is going to be in the A's and in the B's. So it has A to the P minus G minus H. So let's let E equal P minus G minus H. X, Y. Oops, I'm still an X. I'm jumping ahead of myself. X bounds the boundary, so it has some Bs as well. So this big chunk is X. I'm going to define what, how many Bs X has in a minute. Okay. Y, oops, I can just turn that into a B. B to the K is Y. Okay, so now what I'm wondering is can Z have any Bs? Yes, it can. So because the condition is that VXY can't be too big, it could have only the last couple A's and the first couple B's. So Z could definitely contain some B's. So let's let this be B to the F. So the last number of B's is going to be B minus F minus K, and this big thing is the Z chunk, C to the P. Okay, so a lot of variables, a lot of decomposition going on. Okay, what we want to check is if we can find some I so that the string is not in the language. Okay, so again, let's choose I equals zero. Let's pump down. So I'm actually just going to mark it here what happens. V disappears. Y disappears. So what does our pump string look like? Okay, how many A's do we have left? We have P minus G minus H plus G. So we have P minus H A's. How many B's do we have? We have P minus F minus K plus F. So we have P minus K. How many C's do we have? We have P of them. Okay, so since the length of X, I'm sorry, the length of V, which was H, is not zero, and the length of Y, which was K, is not zero, then we have that P is not equal to P minus K, and P is also not equal to P minus H. Okay, therefore S prime is not in the language. All right. So we can also generalize this to say if V's and the A's and Y's and, I'm sorry, V's and the B's and Y's and the C's, we still have a string that can't be in the language. Okay. So we have one other condition to think about. So let's consider when, uh, let's just say V or Y is composed of two symbols. What I mean is one or the other actually sits on a boundary between say A's and B's or between B's and C's, okay? So again, let's let the length of V be H. Let's let the length of Y be K. Length of U be G. And let's see what I actually need to show this. So let's let 
V be empty, and let's let Y be the one that's spanning the A's and B's. Okay, so what do we have then? We have A to the G is our U chunk. We're gonna say V is, actually we don't even need to let it be empty. We can let it have some A's in it, and that's fine. There's our V chunk. X has to be all A's because Y is sitting on the boundary. So I need a length for X. What was I using, J? So A to the J. Y is K, and so this is gonna be, I'll define K in a minute. So this is A to the P minus G minus H minus J. It's also having some Bs, and I'll say how many Bs it has in a moment. Probably gonna run out of space. So what symbols do we have left? We have just Z. So Z is going to be all of the C's and some of the B's. Let's let this be, I don't know, M. Okay, so this is P minus M. Let me, f yeah, that's okay. All right. So I can do one of two things. I can drop out all of Y, I can let I be zero. Okay, and then what happens? We lose the chunk for V and we lose the chunk for Y. And so we're definitely going to have fewer um, A's and B's than C's. C is still gonna have PC's and we're fewer A's and B's, okay? I could also duplicate it up. So for fun, because we haven't done this yet, let's let i be two. And we'll play with some variables. <laughs> okay, so what string am I left with? I'm gonna have, I'm gonna do it the long way and then we'll do the simplified way. So I have a to the g for u, I have a to the h, a to the h. This is what happens when I have v to the two. I'm gonna have two repetitions of the V chunk. I have X to the, oops, it's not an X, it's an A. I have A to the J. And then I'm going to have A to the P minus G minus H minus J followed by B to the P minus M followed by a to the p minus g minus h minus j, followed by b to the m, b to the p minus m, followed by b to the m, followed by c to the p. Okay, why? Because when I did y to the two, I ended up with two repetitions of, of this ab chunk and then the ab chunk. So let's simplify this. Uh, let's do it up here a little bit. So. When I had subtracted G and then added G, let's just get rid of those. I subtracted H and then added H. I subtract J and add J. So what I really have is A to the P plus H. Okay, followed by B to the P minus M, followed by A to the P minus G minus H minus J, followed by B to the P minus M plus M, end up with B to the P, C to the P. Okay, so this chunk still looks good for being in the language. Let's check out what this chunk is going to look like. Is there any hope that this is A to the P? Okay, no. Why? Right here. Okay, so I definitely have too many A's to start off with. And what do we have here? B, P minus M. This was Y, this was the chunk that came from Y, and we said this was the condition where Y is spanning A's and B's. Okay, so P minus M in this decomposition is at least one because of the condition that Y is spanning A's and B's, right? So it has to have at least one B. So this chunk here is definitely at least one B. Okay, what does P minus G minus H minus J look like? 
uh, that chunk could be, we don't have any conditions on x, we don't have any conditions on, what was g? g was the use, we don't have any conditions on that, and v has at least one character in it. So here, this chunk here, has to, actually no, it doesn't. This could be just a to the p, okay? Or it could be smaller than that, okay? But the point here is that this chunk, this piece right here, definitely throws it out of the language. I have some a's followed by some b's, followed by some more a's, followed by some more b's, okay? So if this is s prime, then s prime is not in the language, okay? So we've done a lot of uh, very specific decompositions. So now let's just sum it up, okay? So let's simplify to two cases. Okay, case one, V and Y only contain one symbol. Oh, I'm sorry, one, what I mean is one type of. Okay, so they only contain all A's or all B's or whatnot. Okay, so V does not contain both A's and B's or B's and C's and the same holds for Y. Okay, so in this case, we can't have the same number of A's, B's, and C's if I equals zero or I equals two. Okay, if I equals zero, we end up having fewer of the type of symbols We end up having fewer of the type of symbols covered by V and Y than the symbol, and I'm gonna put symbols, because it could be the case that one or the other of these is empty, not covered. Okay, what happens if I is two? Then more of the type of symbol covered by V and Y, then of the other one. Okay, so that's simple case one. Simplified case two. When either V or Y contain two types of symbols, so either A's and B's or B's and C's. When I equals two, the pump string has symbols that are out of order. Okay, we end up with something that looks like A, B, A, B, B, or A, B, C, B, C, something like that. Okay, so then we can conclude that L is not pump, pumpable, therefore L is not a context-free language. Okay, so work back through and make sure that this makes sense. Again, we did a lot of decomposition mainly just because I wanted to show you how do you actually work with these decompositions. You don't usually have to go into this much detail, but it's good to be able to do it. Okay, to consider different decompositions and try pumping and see what actually happens to the string. But ultimately we want to be able to make these simple arguments.
that say, no matter how we choose this decomposition, the pump string is not going to be in the language because I can find some i that's going to give me a string out of the language. 